the Rangers won 4 0. They brought to a 4 0 victory tonight. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, <Dead> so, <laughs> can I just tell you though? Oh, no. Let me tell you about the first time that I met Scott. Scott will tell you we met when we first started studying A levels uh, when we were at New College. Uh, at the age of about uh, 15, 16. That is not the case. And he may not know this, I don't think anyone else will know this, but this is a true story. We actually first met very briefly at an area sports day. An area sports days are basically where all the best athletes from around the, uh, the, the area come together to play against each other. And uh, basically, I was taking part in the 800 metres. And um, basically, uh, this boy caught my attention. He looked a bit unusual. <laughs> And before, before I just had a look at him, and then he looked really focused about the race ahead, he was about to start the 800 metres, and he said, Come on, Steve August! <laughs> and I was like, what an unusual looking boy! With his bow legs, his big nose and his big ears. And I couldn't quite place the accent. Don't forget, this is a time before the major immigration push of the last 10 years. So there, there, weren't, there weren't many foreigners and voices in the playground. So even though our first meeting was brief, it'd be fair to say he left an indelible mark on me because he was the first foreign person I ever met. <laughs> what, what was the problem with having the race, Rich? Um, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I think he might have won. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, basically, uh, after that, we did know each other a little bit more doing our A-levels at New College, but it wasn't until we, we went to Cardiff University where adversity brought us crashing together. I say adversity, because due to some admin cogger, I had nowhere to live when I first went there, so I was homeless. But Scott had his own problems. Can you imagine how he felt when he arrives at the halls of residence for the first time to find out he has to share a room with a gay bloke who was obsessed with a musical Les Miserables? <laughs> and he played the football body over and over and over again. Now, Scott has enough of to get the girls back to his room without this addition. <laughs> so, Scott and I, in Cardiff, a city we didn't know, surrounded by people we didn't know, who were all having a much better time than us. So what did we do? We went to the pub. <laughs> and that is precisely what we did uh, for the next three years of our lives. And somewhere along the way, uh, Cardiff went to the best times of our young lives. There are a few points from our university days I'd like to draw to your attention that seem to summarise what Scott's all about. The first uh, was that there was a time when Scott managed to get tickets to be in the audience for BBC's Question Time. I'm at home watching it live on TV when the debate moves on to the question of hooliganism that's a recent football match. The MPs start having a recent polite debate about the different parts of the argument. Then uh, I hear some voice shout over from the top, Won't that just be given the hood? Well, it really was that loud. <laughs> uh, so, uh, basically, just over everybody, just start to give you something, which obviously the, the camera panned round to find where this voice had come from. So, for a split second on the TV, I see Scott, red face, looking like he's about to land David Dimpleby. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought to myself, I've got this, you can take the boy out of Glasgow, but you can't take the Glaswegian out of the boy. <laughs> While at Cardiff, Scott was great company, but he was occasionally struck by what he called his Celtic moves. <laughs> and he, he caught about with his special moves when they, they usually seem to occur like, just after Celtic had been bitten. But I think it's, it's also pretty much his excuse to be an invisible salt. But because, because, but because he called the, 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 the moves Celtic, he thought it somehow imbued him with some mystic significance like his bloody Frodo. <laughs> At another point, Scott developed a taste for drinking tequila slammers, but not on nights out, on nights in. So here we are, relaxing at home, drinking tequila slammers with salt and uh, uh, lemon, and that was, our, that was our, our idea of a night in, which is obviously a bit uh, debatable. And then in terms of there was one uh, particularly bad session when uh, we were basically drinking this stuff, and then we ran out of lemon. So I guess what we, when we run out of lemon, we want to continue the session, drinking the tequila. Guess what we used instead? Any guesses? Lime? No. You won't get it. Lemon fairy liquid. <laughs> 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 what did you 
no memory of that. I thought, could someone <laughs> drink it to keep this lemon? Over the years, I've got to know Scott really well, and we had a great time on our stack do. Uh, but it'd be fair to say that, uh, that, that, that Budapest certainly gave us a really, really good insight on what it is to live in a modern world. But I do have to apologise. <laughs> I do have to apologise for one moment. And basically, there was a point at which we were in a public park surrounded by loads and loads of people, and we just saw this, uh, this uh, guy with a snake. So we thought, let's get Scott holding the snake. Oh. and. Uh, Basically, we'll take a picture of Scott when he's holding the snake. So he's got this big python around his neck. And basically, for some childish reason, I don't know why I did it, I pulled his shorts down. Uh -huh. What I didn't bargain for is that he had nothing under the <laughs> <laughs> And as soon as I realised, obviously I was completely naked, I could quickly, 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 very quickly pull them back up. It's <laughs> well, <it's> quite <laughs> close. <laughs> And I think that was obviously the highlight of the stack then, because I remember there was one, one, uh, one, one of the locals laughed, and there was a, 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 a small cry from one of the children. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it would be fair to say that Budapest left its mark on Scott, so I'd like to thank him for being such a really, really good sport, and thanks also go to Cookie for helping organise such a great weekend. Now, So, um, I've nearly come to the end of my speech, and I just want to talk about, I've created what I would call my rules of Scott. So basically, I think these are the rules that he lives his life by. There's ten of them, so let me take you through them. The first rule of Scott, this is a serious one, is he is always a generous host. On our trips to Parkhead, Scott and his family have always been really generous hosts, and always made me feel welcome in Perth, Glasgow, and Cumberland. Uh, the second rule of Scott is that he is always the last man standing at a party. The third rule of Scott is that he is a fierce competitor, which I can't be attested, having played five aside against him many, many times, and I confirm he is a dirty bastard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, third, the, the fourth rule of uh, Scott is that when he goes into a curry house and orders a curry, he will always, always, always order the hottest thing on the menu. And the, fourth, the fifth rule of Scott is that he only eats meat, which basically means he's producing a worldly large supply of methane that is having a huge impact on global warming. <laughs> experts, experts have been dumbfounded for years about why there was such a massive depletion of the ozone layer of the Essex Road. <laughs> now they know. My sixth rule of Scott is that he will character assassinate anyone who walks into a pub and also a soft drink. <laughs> Uh, my, my, uh, my seventh rule is that, and this is a fact, he can drink more than you. That's a kind of a backhanded compliment. My eighth rule of Scott is that he hates the hunt, or Glasgow Rangers, as the rest of us know it. And that includes all players, ex players, managers, and fans. Rule number nine in the event of an argument, Scott is always right. And my final rule is that. Scott has this weird thing where he actually thinks that things that come from Scotland are better than things that come from any other part of the world. And I've written down the list of a few examples. Yeah. Iron Brew, McLean's, Deep Fried Mars Bars, Runnery, Brown's Keeper Willie, Pakora, Rummy Burns, uh, Rapsy Nets Pits, Kilts, Bagpipes, Deep Fried Scott Jays, and of course Ginger People. <laughs> <laughs> so that brings me to the end of my speech. So I would just like to toast Sarah and Scott. I think they have a wonderful relationship. I've had many, many great times with Scott, so I'd just like to raise my glass for Scott and Sarah. Thank you.